Hi YouTube, today I will be reviewing the $2 HP 12C Voyager series financial calculator that I found recently at an Atlantic Goodwill. I'm not particularly fond of financial calculators, I'd rather just use a spreadsheet for that. But the 12C is also Voyager series, it has all the great RPN features and nice key feel of the Voyager series calculators, as well as the nice layout. It has an excellent battery life, and it's even programmable. Let's take a look at something. This turns on on the batteries with which it came. The three batteries in here, when I got this at Goodwill, are still good. That's how amazing the battery life is. Indeed, the power consumption of this device, according to Wikipedia, is only 0.25 milliwatts. Incredibly good battery life. So let's see some of the other features. It's RPN, as I mentioned. Let me clear the registers real quick. There's no weirdo equals key like you'd see in an algebra calculator. Instead, there's the enter key. 5, let's put that in X. 4... Now push 5 up to Y, and then we'll press plus 9. Voila, there's RPN. All you need to know about that. It has RPN. The key feels excellent. It has the classic clicky keys. I'll turn this off and see if you can hear that. Oh my god, so good. It has a nice case that's golden colored metal maybe aluminum or something, and, and mostly plastic. We can see the functions listed on the keys. There's, again, it's a financial calculator, so lots of financial functions. There's two blue, uh, <laughs> blue and orange shift keys, the orange F key, the blue G key for special functions. Amortization, interest, Previous value and future value, I think. Payment, rounding, depreciation. Some nice functions here. Percentages. You can find the change in percent from one value to another. X percent of Y, and then what percent of Y X is. I'll demonstrate those in a little bit. Y to the X, 1 over X, square root of X, E to the X, and LN, and, and so on, that are useful outside financial, financial calculations. Some conversion of date formats and date calculations. I can also try that out in a bit. And this is really cool. Statistics registers. You can do linear correlations, linear regressions, and, and find correlations from that. And you can also get mean, standard deviation, and other such values. Okay, so this model is an original 12C. I think it's from 1983. If I pull up the serial, serial um, number up there, there's MY8380-3960. So 83, I think, is 1983. I would put it in the first version of the 12C, and MY is Malaysia. Let's see what else we have on the back here. Yeah, it's obviously made in Malaysia. That's where the batteries are over there. Okay. Yeah, maybe I'll just zoom in. And some notes on basic financial calculations. Converting dates on the top, interest, amortization, bonds, and then depreciation. I, I can try one of those, those date calculations at some point. And then information about what's in the different statistics registers on the left. Nice and helpful, plus these feet that will keep it from moving around when I flip it. Yes, that's really nice and secure. And I think I'll stay zoomed in this much. I mean, I can see the keyboard much better. Okay, so some other functions. There's, you know, go to, forward step, back step, exchange X and Y registers, clear X, conditional tests, 
This is Turing complete, but it's really limited in its programming functionality. It just does conditionals and branching. Um, so it has jumps and conditionals, but no subroutines, no indirect addressing, uh, no ISZ or DSC. You can create a loop, but you can't create a loop from a single command. It's a bit messier. Oh, I forgot rolling down what's in the stack, store and recall in different registers, exponent, change sign, and so on. Okay, so let's try out a few of these functions. Okay, let's clear the registers. Okay. Yeah, so I'll try dates and I'll try these, uh, or I'll try percentages and then try dates real quick. We can do four, enter five, 5% of 4, so that should be 0.2. Yep, there we go. So percent takes x and makes x percent of y. Okay, clear registers. 4, enter 5, percent difference, plus 25%, going from five, uh, 4 to 5. Okay, let's see what else we can do here. Clear registers. Let's do 4, enter 5, 125%. Yeah, so 5 is 125% of 4. Nice functions we have there. Okay, let's try something with dates. Um, hmm. I'll flip this over real quick and see how that goes. Okay, so I enter in a date and then 120. I do that in decimal form. Yeah, date, uh, month, dot, day, and then year and four four digits. And then 120, and then I press G, and then date. Okay, let's flip this back up. Okay, so what that was for is to find the date that's 120 days after whatever I put in. Today is... August, what day is it? I think it's August 3rd, or it's COVID, time flies. It is August 3rd, 08, oops, clear X, 8.03.2020, enter, 120G, date, huh. Okay, so 120 days, it's saying, would go all the way to December 1st, 2020. Nice. So that, I guess, is helpful for thinking about interest calculations and so on. So that's dates and percentages. Let's try a simple program. I'm going to zoom out again, clear my registers, and do the Fibonacci sequence. So, over, let's put it on the right. On the right, I'm going to show you my super complicated HP12C program to calculate the Fibonacci sequence from what's on the stack. Again, 0, 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, and, you know, you get the picture. Okay. So what I'm going to do is enter in 0, enter in 1, put in the last x, which would be 1, switch x and y registers so I get the you know last value before the second one, add them, and then go to the beginning. And that just you know terminates the program. Programming this is kind of interesting. It's almost TI-58-ish since there's no mnemonics. If I go to program... And then SST. You'll notice I, what I just say, there's no mnemonics. The codes tell you which function you have. So row is the, row is the, excuse me. Uh, yeah, row is the first one. So fourth row, since you have to press G. And then third column, four, three. Here's the really weird thing that's true of the 12C. Yeah. 
and probably other Voyager series. This is the first row, second row, third row, fourth row. This is the first column, second, and then fifth, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. So notice that when you program the calculator, this is the zeroth column, and this is the first column. Strange. But anyway, something to keep in mind. So 4, 3, we press G, and it's last X, so 3, 6. 3 and 6. So this enter key you think of is, is just there. See why I'm covering up. Okay, so let's SST again. X and Y, that's 3 and 4. 3 and 4. We got row and then column. Okay. And now plus, look at that, four zero. Weird. Okay, and then go to four three three three. So that's go to right down there. Zero zero. Okay, and that's our program. Okay, so I will back step a bit. G back step, back step, back step. Back step, and I'll go into run mode. Let's do uh, clear the registers. Zero, enter, one, enter. Now let's run this sucker. Okay, good. Now let's run it again. Two, three, and it took longer. Five, eight, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233, 377, 610, 987. I'm thinking about John Malkovich in Saturday Night Live. We got calculators. Fun moment. 2,584. And it keeps going and going. Okay, so anyway, we can do Fibonacci sequence. I might have more videos in the future where I program, I write little programs into the 12C. I'll try Mastermind, Moonlander, and maybe a prime number, prime number calculating program, prime number detecting algorithm. Let's see some other features that are useful. Okay, let's clear X, clear all the registers. Okay, so you notice there's two decimal places here. If I want to change the number of decimal places to which values are fixed, I do F and then whatever number. There you go. 1.23456, enter. I round it up. Um, then if I want to see the actual value, I think I can go F prefix, and it shows the mantissa. So I could store a number another way and um, not round it and then round it to the right number of places. Let's try one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, seven, F prefix. Um, enter, round, yeah, yeah, so now it's rounded. Yeah, I have to Try that out again and make sure I, I uh, get it right. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Enter F prefix. Oh, there you go. Okay, so that wasn't rounded. And you see when I expand out the mantissa, you can see all the digits au natural as I entered them in originally. Okay, so that's fixing number of decimal places. One more helpful feature. Let's press G and then MIM over here. And you can see the configuration of re memory registers and program steps. So there's eight program steps and then 20 registers. I think you can go up to 99 program steps. And I don't know how maybe also 20 registers, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but um, probably fewer registers at that point. Let's check the Wikipedia article. Anyway, so that's a quick intro to the 12C. I'll just go through and see if there's any more history that bears mentioning.
Okay, yeah, so there's 8 to 99 program steps and 7 to 20 memory registers excluding the stack. Okay, so hopefully that answers that question. I guess with the most program steps, you only have 7 memory registers left over. This is one of the original models. It has the HP NUT processor in it, and that apparently was 884 kilohertz, which explains the low uh, battery consumption. At least I think it does. I mean, after all, the TI-58 was not that fast and needed a rechargeable battery. This model had the HP NUT running at, you know, 884 kilohertz, but later models used either 6502s or ARM processors emulating the NUT and relied on one or two CR2032 batteries instead of the four LR44s. There is the much later model, the HP 12C Platinum, which I think also does algebraic notation as also keystroke programmable. Um, yeah, so, so that was the 6502, but a lot of later versions of the 12C, very recent uh, later versions, again, this calculator has been produced for 40 years, had ARM processors emulating the nuts. So they were very, very quick. They also had flash ports that could use TTL or USB protocols, so you could reprogram them, but based on other videos, I don't think anyone has a custom firmware yet. Then, finally, for those who want a really fancy Swiss Army Calculator 12C, the company Swiss Micros makes the DM12L and then 12CC, you know, either standard form factor or credit card that are modern Swiss titanium versions of the 12C and which are programmable by the user and have a USB port in addition to that super fast ARM processor. Very cool. I'm so glad I found this at Goodwill. I'm definitely going to use it for more programming videos. I'm gearing up at some point, probably in the fall, to do a programmable calculator programming class. I want to implement algorithms, AI principles, games. That's Those three things will probably be the theme. I think I'm going to do that with Free42, but definitely I might have supplemental videos using the 12C, TI-66, TI-95, HP 35S and so on. So it'll be great to add this into that video series. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video as always. Please let me know if you have any suggestions for this video or others in the comments down below. Tell me how you've used your 12C or fun programs you have for it also in the comments. And always like and subscribe. I appreciate it very much when you do. Thank you all for watching and have a great rest of your evening.